Hello and welcome back to SAS Bootcamp Week 5, Video 5. This is going to be the last of our PROC SQL videos. Um, so far, we've learned how to use PROC SQL. We've talked about um, the structure of PROC SQL. We've talked about uh, reading across rows and grouping in PROC SQL and merging in PROC SQL. But really, the, the greatest strength of PROC SQL is not any of those things. All of the things we've talked so far are things you can do in a, in, a, in a data step one way or the other, right? Sometimes maybe it's more complicated to use those retain statements, but you can still do it. Uh, PROC SQLs, my favorite part of using PROC SQL though, is not any of those things. It is the ability to nest PROC SQLs within one another. Nesting PROC SQLs basically refers to how you can write one PROC SQL step within another PROC SQL step. And then you can just keep nesting as you can go as many levels deep as you want. I try not to go beyond two levels, but I have seen people going three to five levels of PROC SQL where they just nest PROC SQL within each other. So how do you do that? Let me show you this example where uh, imagine you are trying to merge two data sets, the Benny visit data set and the Benny date of birth data set, but you only want to merge those two data sets and you only want to get the output for males. Right. The problem is that males, that gender variable is not in your Benny underscore visit data set and it's also not in your Benny underscore DOB data set. Right. That's in a completely other third data set called Benny underscore gender. Uh, so what you need to do when that happens is you would write your PROC SQL statement as you normally would, right? You have your create table with the left male DOB underscore visit, which is the name of my new data set as select a.benny.id, a.visit, birth. So I want the Benny ID and visit from my A file. A file here is class.benny underscore visit as A. And then my DOB, date of birth, has to come from class.benny underscore DOB as B. And I'm doing a left join from those two things. Left join meaning I want every individual or every row that's in my visit data set and if those individuals are not in the Benny DOB, I still want them. But individuals that are not in my visit data set, that are not in the left data set, don't make it into my output. Right? So that's what that left join is saying. And because I have a left join, I have to have my on command. And the on command tells PROC SQL, what is my key variable in the left data set? What is my key variable in the right data set? After doing this, this is my regular left join syntax. I now have a where statement where I can ad impose additional conditions. And the conditions that you can write within a where statement in Brock SQL are a lot more complex than the conditions you can write in a where statement within data steps, right? In a data step in a where statement, you're basically filtering rows based on whatever conditions you wanna use. We used a condition earlier in this week where we said, um, let me scroll up here, where we said where date of birth is greater than 1st January, 1990. That's the type of condition where we've seen, uh, which we've seen in the where statement in a simple data step. In PROC SQL though, your where commands and where conditions can get really, really complex. In this example, what I'm trying to say is this previous set of code has to be only executed and only those rows have to be saved into a new data set where the Benny ID in the left file is not present in and then within the parentheses, I can list, I can nest another whole PROC SQL step in there. In this case, I'm saying select from where, which is the structure of a PROC SQL statement. I'm saying select Benny ID from class.benny gender, where gender equals M. So let me open my data set here. Um, so let's look at the gender data set. So, Two, Benny ID two is male, Benny ID four is also male, right? One, three, and five are female. So what this code is saying is, please execute this left join as described above that we've already seen, but only include those rows in this final data set, which are actually individuals that are female. And how does SAS know that they are female? Well, check to see if the Benny ID is matched with Benny IDs from Benny underscore gender data set where the gender variable equals males. So it will first take this data set, it will subset this data set for males only, 
which subsetting for males will give you Benny ID 2 and Benny ID 4, which is the Benny ID here, right? And then you use that in the select statement, and then you use the not in command to combine these two. So this will basically say this, this Benny ID here in the where statement should not be in the Benny IDs that is outputted from this parenthesis. Right? And you can even use the in operator here, which will make sure that if you use the win in operator, everybody that is being outputted is going to be male. If you do the not in operator, everybody that is being outputted will be female. So, so uh, let me quickly run this and we will see if this works. Check my log, log looks okay. Check my output data set. Now, remember this is a left join, correct? Left join for Benny visit two, for Benny visit, left join should have included Benny ID one, three, four, five, and six. But you actually look at your output data set and it only has one, three, five, and six. Benny ID two, Benny ID, Benny ID four, who is in my Benny underscore visit file, right? It's not included because if you look in the Benny gender, Benny ID4 is male. And we've said here in the code, do not include males, right? So what we've done is we've merged two data sets and then we've filtered our output data set based on the value of Benny ID and other conditions in a third completely different data set. So using Brock SQL here, I've managed to make decisions of filtering in one primary data set based on a secondary data set that's not even being merged right here, right? Um, and in this example, I've tried to show how I'm doing a merge while using a where function, but it doesn't have to be a merge, right? So for example, I can copy and paste this. Let me see if I can show you guys this. Let's say I just wanted to do this. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say, okay, so in this example, I'm trying to say, take my Benny visit variable, hold on to, I'm gonna say all of my variables from the Benny visit data set. So use the Benny visit data set in the class library, hold on to all of the variables in that data set, but only when the Benny ID is not in, let me take out the not here, make the logical simple. Where the Benny ID is in, select Benny IDs from the gender data set where gender equals M. Right? So if I do this, gender equals M is what? Individual two and individual four. Individual two is not in the Benny data set, which means our output data set should have just individual four. Right? We are making filtering decisions in this data set based on values of Benny ID in a completely different data set. When you are using this nesting feature, be careful, right? You have to be careful as to whether you're using the in command or the not in command. Second, when you are using the nesting, you are also doing another merge, if you will. If the merge is implicit in this case, but basically you are merging the variable mentioned in this, in this condition, the Benny ID variable, with the output variable from your nested SQL. So your select statement should only have one variable here. And that one variable is the key for your merging in this example. If you have more than one variable, so for example, if I listed Benny ID comma gender, because the Benny underscore gender data set actually has two variables, that will throw you an error. Um, let's see. See that? It says a subquery cannot select more than one column. A composite expression is usually is used incorrectly in an expression. So this uh, this nested proc SQL and inside this is, a, is called a subquery because it is nested within the larger proc SQL and a subquery cannot have more than one column because if you have one column, then that column is used as the key to basically implement this condition statement, if you will. Right? So make sure you only have one column or one variable in the subquery when you are using this but then you can use in or you can use not in. So if I use not in, it will basically match these Benny IDs with the output from this inner date from the subquery, and it will make sure all the Benny IDs that are in this file are basically excluded from my final file. So if I use this, anybody that is male is excluded 
So my output data set should include individuals 1, 3, 5, and 6. 1, 3, 5, and 6. There you go. On all 1, 3, 5, and 6 are females based on the Benny underscore gender data set. So, so you can basically do conditional logic and you can filter out data sets based on a third data set without actually merging, which makes things really simple. So let me show you an example of how I would usually use this. And I'm showing this example with hypothetical data sets. If you run this next piece of code, it's not gonna work because these files don't exist. But I'm trying to give you an example of how I would use this. Let's say in a project, um, you are trying to pull pharmacy claims. So uh, insurance claims from the pharmacy, you're working with a pharmacy data set, but you only want those pharmacy claims for opioid prescriptions for individuals that do not have cancer, right? Let's say I'm, that's the study I'm working on. I'm working on pulling opioid prescriptions for individuals that don't have cancer and I'm pulling their pharmacy claims. To do this simple task, I need to work off of three files. I need to work off my pharmacy file data set, which has all my pharmacy claims. And then I need to work off of my uh, medical files data set, which tells me whether individuals have cancer or whether they don't have cancer. And then I need to work off of an NDC file data set, which tells me if the pharmacy claim actually is for an NDC that is a opioid medication or if it is a non-opioid medication. So I've got three files. I can use all three data sets within one Proc SQL step as shown here. Here I'm saying create table X, right? Whatever new table is, that's I'm calling that X and create the table as select and I'm listing all the variables I want. In this case, I just want two variables, Benny ID and the NDC from, this is the pharmacy file. This is the pharmacy file that includes all the pharmacy claims. And then my where command is where you can get really tricky. So here I'm saying where Benny ID is not in select Benny ID from the medical file where diagnosis equals cancer. So the diagnosis variable tells you if individuals have cancer or not, but that variable is in the medical file. So in the subquery here, I am using the select from where feature to basically select all the individuals that have cancer and using the not in command, I am excluding all beneficiaries from my pharmacy file that are in the subquery. So all beneficiaries that have cancer, get excluded out of my output data set. But that's not the only one. I also have an AND feature here. And I'm making sure that the NDCs that are included in my output data set X, right? that NDC has to be present in this subquery. And this subquery is basically pulling from the NDC file. And it is making sure that the column in that data set named drug category name contains a value called narcotic, which is my way of saying only pull NDCs for opioid medications. So this subquery will basically select all the NDCs where the drug category was narcotic or opioid, and it will make sure that the NDCs in my output data set X are NDCs that are in the subquery, right? So now using this one simple PROC SQL, I have worked off of three different files to select all the individuals that don't have cancer and that are taking opioid prescriptions and I'm basically selecting all of their pharmacy prescriptions. Right? So you can string these nested SQLs together uh, to basically do complex logic, really, really complex logic. So as you can tell, PROC SQL is really powerful. These past five videos should have shown you how incredibly useful PROC SQL is. Having said that, be very careful when you are using PROC SQL. It's very easy, for example, to nest several layers deep within PROC SQL. So for example, here I have been where Benny ID not in and a subquery. In this subquery, in my where command, I could have written another PROC SQL through another sub subquery, right? So if you are writing nested PROC SQL statements like that, in order for a third person to come review my code and make sure this PROC SQL statement works appropriately, they will start reading up here, but they first need to understand the subquery Right? And then they need to understand the where statement and only then they can understand what this PROC SQL is doing. So if I nest another subquery underneath here, they need to first understand that sub subquery, then they need to understand the regular subquery, and then they will understand the actual PROC SQL query. So it just creates complexity. It creates complexity that is difficult to interpret and difficult to catch errors in.
So, so when you have an error, which is not a syntax error, so the log doesn't tell you something's wrong, in order to make sure that the code is actually doing what you intend for it to do, you have to understand so many things which are not sequentially listed, which makes code harder to proofread. So ProcSQL has a lot of benefits, but please be careful using ProcSQL. We covered disadvantages in the first video of this week, talking about how ProcSQL actually needs more memory and how ProcSQL actually takes even more time than data steps, especially when you're working with really large data sets. So while there is convenience in terms of the number of lines of code you have to type, be very careful with when you use ProcSQL and when you don't. As a rule of thumb in my research, and this is a very personal thing, so you decide what you are comfortable with. But when I am doing my programming, I will use ProcSQL for any instances where I need to do a merge statement and when I need to nest one ProcSQL query within another. If I need to do more than one layer of nesting, I just go back and I refer to um, a data set to do that. The final case where I will use a ProcSQL is when I need to do groupings or when I need to define a bucket or aggregate rows up. Uh, for those three cases, merging data sets, nesting ProcSQL queries, nesting one level of ProcSQL queries, and for grouping data sets, I will really use ProcSQLs. For everything else, for creating variables, for, um, for adding new rows, for adding columns, any other data management or data manipulation I need to do, I will do within data steps because your data step is your classic SAS workhorse and it is very reliable, it's easy to interpret and it is pretty efficient on its own. Um, so I try not to overuse PROC SQL. You figure out what you are comfortable with. Any combination actually is okay as long as the code works, but trying to be a little more disciplined with your code can help make your programs um, easily, inter easily interpretable and it is easy to collaborate with multiple programmers when you do that.